Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Petra I. Miller. I'm the Senior Marketing Manager at HSO, a global Microsoft partner. I'm joined today by some of the wonderful folks at Housing Works, a New York City-based nonprofit that is a healing community of people living with and affected by HIV AIDS. So now I'd like to get started by just taking a few minutes to introduce everyone. So can you all please uh, introduce yourself with your name, your role at Housing Works, and how long you've been with the organization? So uh, my name is Jalanta Ilzok. I'm a CFO of Housing Works. I've been uh, with Housing Works since May of 2014. Hi, I'm Chanchal Ganhwani. I'm Vice President for Data and Software Application. I'm working with Housing Works from last ten and a half year. And my name is Lasha Shambaridze. I'm a Director of Finance. I've been working for Housing Works since September 2015. So what is the mission of Housing Works? Can you speak a little bit about that? Housing Works is a community-based non-profit organization. Our main goal is to provide healing to all the people who are suffering for HIV, homelessness, wealth crisis, people with, you know, a lot of other issues, like, you know, we provide a variety of services. We do like health home programs, which basically help you to manage your health with case management stuff. We provide housing to people. We got so many facilities throughout the New York City. Uh, so we provide housing, we provide a lot of, um, substance use services where we help people to get on their feet again. We also provide services people who come from incarceration, they come out of jail and you, they, we help them to come back on their feet. We help them, uh, you know, to get the job, to find the job. We have a, a unique program called JTP. Uh, that program is basically help people to, you know, go for the uh, you know school again try to get diploma and then we also give them job in house you know so that they can back on their feet they can get the housing and whatnot so our main motive is to give people stable housing because that's the main key factor in the health I mean we are a healthcare organization but we also focus on people to help you know get the housing get the job right because if they, you don't have stable housing no job then even though you are healthy, you're not going to be feeling healthy. So our main motive is to, you know, not just give them like medical services, help them in overall their health, their life. So yeah, I mean, in a nutshell, we do so many things, but I, I think that's yeah. what yeah. we do in yeah. different programs and whatnot. Oh, that's wonderful. And any anything else, Lasha or Jalanta, you wanted to add there? We uh, also helping people with HIV in different countries that uh, they are having problems because of being HIV positive, then trying to help them to get into the, to the United States. So we have pharmacies and we also, it started, I think, originally with uh, the thrift stores that we have yeah, all over the yeah. city by people donating clothes, clothing and uh, furniture. We sell that and that's how we started to get money for, you know, helping those people with HIV in the beginning. Now it's only partial a part of our revenue in source. I just want to add one more thing. So we have, we got very, very active and robust uh, uh, advocacy department. So we go, we basically protest for people, for their rights and whatnot. And our advocacy department, our legal department also help with, you know, different kind of discrimination like gender discrimination, HIV, all those things. So we fight for them. Uh, and it's like we achieved a couple of very, very good success in the last few years. So we got like very, very active legal and advocacy department. We have uh, offices in Puerto Rico. We have offices in uh, Haiti. Uh, right now we have office of, we just opened an office in Georgia. Belize in Georgia, that's the country. So, uh, yeah, we try to expand and help as much people as we can. As John Charles said, we are so broad. We're not, we're not relying on just grants or uh, we have uh, so many sources of income. 
uh, we are so diverse in that in that respect that uh, we basically are have like uh, businesses that support the goal. We have the grants that support the goal. We have our health services department that supports the main goal. So basically, uh, very broad and uh, like a bigger big organization in that respect. I think that's a perfect transition, actually, with the different streams of revenue. So let's talk a bit about then the history of your financial management system, and that's evolved over time. So we understand that you were utilizing GP, Microsoft GP, as your financial management system um, yeah. with accounting, the accounting part hosted, though, by another partner. So what was going well, or what was not going well, rather, in your organization that prompted you to bring GP entirely in-house uh, back in 2015? So I can speak, then Lasha can continue. So when I started working uh, here, as I mentioned, we have been outsourcing finance and medical billing with uh, BTQ, and they have been using uh, Great Plains. After we brought in medical billing in-house, but medical billing is not done on a Great Plains, it's done on an ECW, so it's a different software. But company that have been outsourcing with Got, got very upset with us that we pulled out the medical billing uh, from them. So they basically said, you just take your finance uh, with you too, and you go, you have two months to get away from us. So because they've been using GP, we decided to go with GP. And then uh, we have been looking who to, you know, who would be our provider for support with the Microsoft GP. And I think one of the three companies uh, we went for RFP and I, AKA came as part of the best providers at that time, you know, it was AKA, now it's uh, changed the name, but so that's how we end up Microsoft, a Great Plains and your company, AKA. Got it, okay. And, and just for folks listening, AKA was AKA Enterprise Solutions and they were acquired by HSO uh, a couple of years ago, so now we're HSO, that's what Delonta is referring to. So what made you choose then, AKA at that time, now HSO, what about their, their, do you remember? I mean, I realize it's been a while. <laughs> we remember people who we worked with, first of all, uh, they were very hands-on, uh, they were very easy to talk to, that they paid so much attention attention to us like anytime we contacted them like that we got a reply within like 15 minutes and basically in our office like uh, I don't know Jolanta maybe four to three four days a week yeah and Michael Scott Ed uh, they did tremendous job tremendous job because it's a really uh, rare way where you can see uh, when you can get a salesperson who understands accounting for real like right. uh, the, not just on the surface like they really did understand the you know we didn't have to repeat our request and like the this communication like was seamless so that's why we chose to go with them right also we have changed the grant accounting completely from uh, the way it was done at btq we separated all the grants per grant and uh, we cre we had to purchase also mm -hmm. analytical accounting and we had to purchase the accounts payable software connect the two together because they have not been in the past you know the btq had not been using uh, Ariet as a AP uh, solution. So that they have done tremendous work uh, with helping us to set up the AP, connect the AP uh, with the accounting portion of it and setting up the analytical accounting as uh, Lasha had said and the grant, the whole completely different grant system uh, because the other one was I just did, don't even know how they've been passing the audits in the past. But so that Michael, Scott and Ed were uh, brilliant. We kind of, uh, we, we lost, you know, kind of Michael, we don't work with him anymore. Sometimes we work with Scott and sometimes we work with Ed, but but we are very happy with, with the support we got from AKA at that time. 
and now it continues on with HSO. So we're going to change gears just a little bit away slightly from financial management to the ambitious project you guys launched or you launched rather in 2019, the multi-phase cloud migration. So what was going on or what was not going well in Housing Works that led you to make the decision to um, go this route to pursue a cloud migration? Yeah, yeah, I think I can I can talk all day. I can talk all day about it actually. So um, to begin with, I mean, um, we we got our own data warehouse. Uh, we call it Colo. It's on West Twenty Second Street, Twenty Third Street. I mean, as you know, we got so many locations, different places, right? And uh, the lifeline of entire housing works is our data system, which is eClinical Works and EI Care, right? Mainly two data systems because everybody does enter data into two systems now. ECW becomes more critical because as Yolanta said, they use it for billing also, right? So if so you can see the magnitude if those data systems are let's say down for 10 minutes. So you can multi 10 multiply by so many employees, so that many hours you lose every minute, right? And what used to happen because uh, our infrastructure was not designed to scale at that level when when they launched way back then it was not sustainable and we were trying to do a lot of patchwork on it like you know let's try to do this let's try to do that but it was not working out and then you know later on we got jolanta's department in the house that becomes very critical now that you should not go down and then we enhance we uh, started expanding clinics and whatnot so if system goes down that's like a huge deal right and we faced a lot that okay in, uh, because our infrastructure was not ready and uh, before few few years before that, we outsourced our entire IT actually to some other firm. So when I say IT, that means network, uh, user management, system, and everything, right? So there was like so many hiccups going on, and uh, that time we decided like we don't want to continue with our our hardware because you know you need to upgrade hardware every couple of years because they go out and you know they are not current and whatnot and we decided to let's go to the route cloud right where we can host this system because these systems can be hosted they need not to be in like local premises or local infrastructure so we had a lot of issues and then we decided to go on cloud so we wrote rfp and we circulated it right uh, i think initially we got like response from probably eight to ten people and then we shortlisted it to three um, vendors one was AK, which is now HSO, and when was Synoptic, and there was one more that I honestly I don't remember the name. And then, um, so Synoptic, we were already working with them because they were our IT partner, right? Uh, we were also working with HSO because they were partnering with us on our uh, financial uh, software side, right? So we had interviews with both uh, all three companies actually. And then uh, the, what kicked, I mean, I was the main decision maker in that. So what basically impressed me about AKA that time is they were ready to come into our premises. They were ready to do like, you know, pre-scanning and pre-finding and whatnot without even, they were like, even though you don't give us the, you know, the uh, contract, we are okay providing you report what can be done what not can be done what is not what's wrong right so they came i mean specifically tom came to our office for i think two days and he scanned our network he provided us a report you were not i mean ak was not even submitting us the response before they were like very found of like we want to scan it we don't want yeah. to commit something you know this or that they basically came they scanned it and then they give us proposal honestly uh if you Talk dollar wise, there was not a lot of difference in all three vendors. It was well, neck to neck. Uh, Jolanta gave us very, very good feedback of you guys because you were already working with them, right? And the response time, as Lasha was saying, response time was like very, very good and whatnot. So after all those things, we we decided, and I think Jolanta was also in that process of selecting AKA. So we selected AKA. We worked with AKA on you know designing. So I worked Tom a lot in designing the infrastructure. What should we do? What should which should not? We used to meet like every other day for like hours and design and whatnot. So we did that and we launched a project that's gonna complete, let's say, in six months, right? That was the idea to move everything from our on-prem to servers. And these are old systems, right? So it takes time to move and whatnot. 
but when we were working on that plan we were already ball were, was rolling and what not and then pandemic hit right so as soon as pandemic hit we were our infrastructure was nowhere near ready to do remote working this that all those things right and that's what good about hso is like i wrote an email to tom and i said man we have to do we have to complete this six month project in like two weeks okay we 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 have to do it because our infrastructure was not there because it's all in house and then you have to have vpn vpn was not scaling enough to you know get the connections and what not so we launched that project like we work i mean i i appreciate tom till this day we work day and night day and night day and night so completing that six month project in like two to three weeks i guess and we moved everything everything from uh, our our local infrastructure to cloud e clinical works held a lot I and mean, they assigned us good resources and what not so we completed that uh, not six month like probably four month project in two weeks day and night day and night and you're not going to believe that there was no hiccup like there's always going to be like 1% hiccups for you that's on the user level but it was a successful migration that that migration went on for like i think 48 hours uh, so i was a uh, 48 hours tom was a uh, we were like we, we we did it and nobody believed that we going to be able to do it but we did it and then uh, you know from that everybody is like using the systems and from that time till today from the infrastructure side there is zero downtime there might be one particular site goes down but that's not because of our infrastructure is good that might be the problem with the site on internet and what not that's not anyways in hss control so yeah that was like you know a wow moment uh, i mean we planned everything but execution was like spot on and and it was it was good wow and i mean kudos to you though for making that happen in, in such a short span of time with covid and that must have been not a fun two weeks <laughs> no and see yeah. our houses are not ready i mean i used to work from office right so my overall house setup was not ready to work like that and i got like four monitors and servers and what not right so yeah but i mean i think we pulled it off and and then it is good I do have another question with regards to this though. So did you consider with the with the RFP process? Did you consider any other products other than Microsoft Azure or any other cloud-based products or did you just consider Microsoft? Honestly, we only considered Microsoft because Microsoft we are Microsoft shop, right? Everything in our organization is Microsoft. So going with any other provider like AWS is not I mean we didn't consider that because everything is Microsoft and all. Also I I wanted to add that we added uh, a property management system oh, which wow. is also integrated to a great brain so that is working fine for us. And the property management systems is, does that manage all the different like the the retail locations and the other piece of property what exactly does it no, do? No it's a uh, housing uh, it's basically oh. uh, billing uh, sending invoices to the clients I mean yeah to the clients grantors or sub whoever is paying subsidy for the clients and uh, keeping track of accounts receivable so what was your experience then in the financial management project and in the cloud migration project during the implementation before during and after working with HSO and Jolanta and Sanchal you touched on this a little bit but if you could just expand on it a little bit as well and and Lasha please feel free to chime in too so basically i can you know Lasha was the hands on guy i've yeah. been more like you know trying to keep all the system and transition going i would say that it was really amazing uh, we did not have any problems obviously it was very complicated but those guys knew what to do they've been here almost every day Uh, working with us and the response time was amazing and possibly there was the best transition that I ever had in my life you know with uh, the software company i went through several other transitions in the past and that we talking about financial transition we talking payroll transition we talking property management transitions this was the best transition i ever went through Yes and uh, uh basically we also added another another company that we 
Bailey House in 2019. And uh, we were running actually two GPs for around eight months. And then we had to combine the GPs so that from the date that we uh, merged. So they were amazing. Scott was the main, main point guy on that on that one. Um, so he was amazing uh, working with him on this project. Uh, By the way, Scott is brilliant. Like he Scott, can... is, yeah, he <coughs> comes up with the solutions also. It was so seamless working with him. Like uh, when we had a meeting, it was always so productive. Like everybody, of course, all well, the whole finance team was in a meeting, and everybody's ideas were considered. And then, uh, you know, AKA suggested their own version of the those ideas. And uh, most of the time, they were brilliant. Basically, uh, the communication was seamless, the respect, uh, everything. Like, uh, I, I can say enough good things. Uh, Sancho, do you want to say anything further, or are you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, yeah, I got like two, three things. One is like, uh, as Lasha, I think, mentioned already before, that response time is brilliant. I got, I print ticket also, but I email Tom also when something is need to be taken care of like right away. And he, his response time was like very, very good. The other thing is most of the time Tom knows what he's doing in terms of infrastructure, but this was not GP, right? It's more like a data software. So it was a little different for him. He's, I think, very, very good and expert in GP systems. So he was not like, you know, oh, let's, no, I don't know. He always comes up with ideas and brainstorming. He never says like, oh, I can do that or I can't do it. I mean, he talks with you, we try to understand, goes back, does his homework and come back and provide solutions. So that's what I like about Tom. He is not going to be very excited all the time, but he's not going to be like, I can't do this. This is not my responsibility. He's going to come and talk to you and talk it out like, okay, let's try to do this. So there are a couple of scenarios because we use ADFS for our software, uh, software authentication and all. And some things were very challenging, but we sat down for like hours and, you know, we read articles together and, you know, try to come up with solutions. So it, it's not like for me, Tom is not like vendor. It's he's more like my, you know, co-worker and try to come up with solution together rather than, you know, I say, oh, this is your responsibility or oh, he comes and he says, your response. It's more like a joint effort for the success of that particular uh, problem. So that's what I like about Tom. I can recommend him like. What benefits has house, Housing Works seen so far with the improved financial management and the data management, both at an organization and a user level? How has it helped the organization advance their mission more effectively? I mean, the systems are working efficiently and effectively and we don't have any downtime. So uh, obviously we are progressing, moving. We never really have any problems. Maybe very few sometimes that MR has to be rerun or updated, you know, overnight or uh, like if there is something happening that we get stuck or the GP is frozen, then we get the response time you know, uh, very quickly. So, but that doesn't happen often. So, you know, the, there is efficiency and productivity. The system is helping us to have uh, efficiency and productivity in our business. So just to add on that, like Jolanta's software doesn't really user facing. It's her department who uses it. My softwares are more like user facing, right? As she mentioned, like downtime is zero. Um, virtually because if there is a downtime, it's because of that particular location or particular user. It's not because of the infrastructure. That's one thing. Second thing I want to add is we basically uh, started taking these hotels uh, during COVID to, you know, for the shelter, for, you know, to quarantine and whatnot, right? The advancement, I feel like if it's our old infrastructure, there's no way we can give all the VPN and everything in those hotels to access our data systems. But when we moved to cloud, it was like we just trick it a little bit and boom, it was available to everyone. So if that cloud, if we have not migrated that, I mean, we have not completed that project in two weeks, hotel business that we ran during COVID uh, would have not been possible because the softwares were not available, right? Our main EF, EMR is not available. So I think that's one of the, I and like 
in 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 terms of advancement and business i feel that's the one part stand stand out right jolanta i mean we worked a lot in hotels during covid time has that continued or is that is that something that has gradually been let go of as the numbers have gone down like how what what was the progression there how is your organization still dealing with covid i guess is that this the question so we still have few grants discovered uh, contracts so some of them are closing down but uh, we're looking into some sustainability uh, hotels we may have four grants but not really covered grants any longer and they are not emergency grants they are regular grants with the a city but mostly for homeless so what's next with housing works in terms of helping more people <laughs> the numbers are our budget uh, 80 million when i started it's now 150 million so we are, we are moving in the right direction so obviously as lasha mentioned we acquired a uh, bailey house in uh, 2019 so we added you know we were 680 employees now we are over 1000 employees maybe there's going to be through mergers or acquisitions just doing a good work and increasing the amount of clients we are serving and obviously the employees would go along with that and we are opening a lot of new programs new clinics and new ways to engage clients i mean we are really much involved in like televisit now so that you know people can do visits from different places so we are doing like in i think it's not like one area that you can point out we are doing it right in all the areas like we got a couple of very good brand recently and that's just because of how we serve the client and what not so i think every program is expanding the way i mean whatever they can capture yeah we had we started with 40 grants and now we have all 80 grants so we double the amount of grants and we getting since we are doing uh, really good financially and uh, we are very effective we get really uh, good scores for uh, the program ratio to the management ratio you know obviously we are not uh, spending money on uh, employees and administration we spending more money on programs so we getting more and more grants because of that everybody is willing to give us grants so every time we apply for a grant we almost always get it yeah yeah Yeah. It's like more we choose like which grant to apply now rather than you know apply for all the grants because uh, whichever one suits the organization best. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I mean are there in terms of how an individual or a company or other folks outside of grants how you know if somebody wants to volunteer with you what's the best way to support housing works as an individual or an organization like help all of the many different programs you have going on? Yeah so we completely I mean we have I think somebody on the staff that is dealing with volunteers volunteers are mostly in the area of thrifts we have events that we do right. uh, and yeah. a lot of donations oh, yeah. come through the events where we do like uh, auctions uh we diversify over there, uh, there too like uh, we always so have websites where we do the auctions uh we do have events the big, big events like a the ground break at dinners uh where basically people donate money for the cause basically uh we try to the covid period fast couple of years kind of you know messed with the uh, the schedule but we still did uh, the events which brings a lot of money uh and a lot of people donate uh anonymously we don't even know so like there's a person i believe that donates fifty thousand dollars every year and we don't even know it's uh, it's anonymous wow. so we do we do get like donations and pledges from a lot of companies through our advocacy through our events and uh so if somebody watching this wanted to you know wanted to know how to help There are many different ways to get involved. It sounds yes, like. Yes, of Correct. course. You can, you can go to housing website. You can uh, read our mission. You can go to how to donate. Uh, you can go to the auction website where we sell our the products. Uh, like there are many ways to help us. Sorry, Joanne, do you want to say something? No, actually, you mentioned the volunteers. So mostly, like what Lasha mentioned about those events, one of the events is designed on a dime, 
which is like three or four day event that brings us uh, 1.3 million dollars. Now we have uh, bike rides also that uh, probably brings us around quarter of a million dollars. Then we have Fashion for Action and me- mostly that's where we get those volunteers. The volunteers come and help us with the event. So we stand in the booth and, you know, and then also they basically constantly working in the stores. So what makes each of you happiest and most excited about the work that you do and the future of Thousand Works. What mm. makes <clears throat> what makes me more excited is, <laughs> you know, the work we are doing for the clients. And also, I have never had a better staff in my life that I currently have, uh, which is my finance department and uh, medical billing and collection. So we are like a true team. And, you know, we travel together for vacation. So we go to, let's say, to to Tbilisi, Georgia. So uh, we really uh, work like amazingly together for the mission of this organization. So I'm happy to wake up and go to work. Yes, it's different. Like uh, previously when you worked for for for-profit companies, you always know you're trying to get like more and more money out of the customer. And uh, had unfortunately, I worked for the companies who were, you know, like a debt settlement companies and stuff like that. Who, you know, were not for, wore out for themselves, not for the customers for themselves. Now, like, uh, like uh, I have a totally different feeling. Like waking up, going to work, uh, knowing you're helping somebody. It's uh, it's different, and also Jolanta is a big part of it. Jolanta mentioned our finance department is amazing finance and billing department, and uh, she put a team together that uh, we've never been so close. She gets like huge credit for that. Jolanta is amazing. Mm. Oh, thank you, Lasha. <laughs> Uh, well, Lasha is amazing too, and my team is amazing. So. Trust, trust, trust me, cannot get a better team. So I'll be working with this team that's going to be my last team in my life. Uh, so yeah, as, as Jovanta said, like, it's the cause. Uh, and then the other thing, I mean, I come from the software background. So I've worked, worked with like good software companies in the past. Here it's different. It's like community. It's more like, you know, family, more or less. Like, you know, we are trying to achieve something together which is helping you know people and whatnot that motivates me the other thing is as i said i'm software and data guy so it feels good when i provide data that's gonna help someone you know in in, to get a home you you know what i'm saying or get back on their feet not like you know for some big financial organization Uh, that motivates me and that's why i'm here since like 10 years now so whenever I generate a report or give data, I feel like I'm doing it for someone who really need or, or, or whatnot. All oh, right, I think that I mean it's a perfect way to end this. Thank you guys. I mean you you, you helped us a lot in like tough times. So yes, thank you. Bye bye. Have you. a great Bye-bye. day. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. You too.